It's the story that's ignited fierce passions across the nation as allegations of racism and miscarriage of justice tear apart a small Florida town. Three weeks ago, Trayvon Martin, an unarmed black teenager, was shot down by a white neighborhood watchman who claimed self-defense. As the nation was shutting down from COVID 14 months ago, what happened here in March 2020 stopped Louisville in its tracks. The shooting death of Breonna Taylor, an innocent 26-year-old woman gunned down by police in her own home as they executed a no-knock warrant. Give us some more units. We're fighting them. Tonight, police officers and paramedics in Aurora, Colorado, are facing criminal charges after stopping 23-year-old Elijah McLean while he walked home from a convenience store. Uh, I cannot breathe. I cannot breathe. Oh. Police brutality is its own epidemic and the United States is scrambling to find solutions to black Americans' frustrations. One solution to this issue is in a stalemate in the Senate, the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. If passed, this act is reported to be one of the most comprehensive police reform bills with many stipulations to minimize police terror like creating incentives for bans on chokeholds, making police officers do diversity and inclusion training, cementing a national ban on no-knock warrants for drug-related cases, and most importantly, collecting a lot of data on police misconduct. But there is something missing. Cameras. Most of us were exposed to police brutality through them. And this act does mention putting even more faith into our technology to assist with data collection on police misconduct. So that's a good thing, right? No. Actually, it's what we don't want. Police have more access to us than ever before. Now we have technology that instead of having, you know, a few specific officers who have to be in person in a certain community, the technology can act on as eyes on that community. And so using surveillance cameras um, and putting them, whether it's, you know, around a neighborhood that is predominantly black or brown, or even using it and, and installing it in um, urban housing in apartments um, so that when people enter and exit or in the hallways, they're being tracked. And beyond that, you don't even have to rely on people watching what's on the camera feed because now we have algorithms and facial recognition technology that can be watching specific people, monitoring their every movement, where they go, who they interact with. They can be cross-checking it against different databases, um, again, without them knowing it. But it's happening in communities that are being targeted by police already. It's not happening in the upper class white suburbs. This is happening in um, places where, where uh, minority communities are living and it's just making it so that police have more opportunities to target these communities um, at, a, at a faster pace through the use of the technology. So what do we do? There are two main things. First, we have to figure out what we want from police reform and transparency. It's very clear that the relationship between our communities and the police is historically wrecked beyond repair. But within that, we can't count out the good people who set out to do the healing work. I initially was a teacher uh, for a nonprofit called City Year, and I worked as a second grade English teacher in the Northeast area. Um, and during that time, I was working with a lot of inner city students and their parents. And um, a big issue, you know, surrounding these kids and these parents was their interaction with police at times. Um, it always seemed to be, you know, not, not the best interactions. And so I felt that as a police officer, I could do a, you know, kind of a better job of really understanding the relationship and, and trying to help out uh, bridge the relationship between, you know, police and the community. So that's why I became a police officer with, uh, with DC. Second, we need to figure out what our limits are and demand for our boundaries to be respected. 
organizations like Fight for the Future, Community Oversight of Surveillance DC, and Data Rights for Black Lives, just to name a few, are working to improve security regulations every single day. Support their platforms. We all need to make peace with technology's ever-present role in our lives. But that doesn't mean we can't resist or organize when things are taken too far. We simply can't afford to. Black lives are depending on us.